Dave Meltzer joining us here today. New edition of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter available right now at WrestlingObserver.com. And there's a lot of news in the issue this week. And uh, we started this show here today, Dave, talking about the basics of WWE's quarterly report. And uh, you've got all of the in-depth in depth news on this. So what's what's the big story here? There really wasn't a big story. Um, Aside you know, from just... making a lot of money. They made a lot of money. A couple categories are up. A couple categories are down. A lot more people are watching the the pay per view shows because they're on Peacock, and because Peacock has expanded its audience. So, um, and uh, you know, they made a big deal about how uh, uh, the Elimination Chamber show was bigger than the prior Saudi show. But between the growth of Peacock, which was primarily due to the Olympics, and also the fact that it was on a Saturday rather than a Thursday, that kind of explains it. You know, Thursday afternoon isn't going to be a giant number uh, compared to a Saturday afternoon. But, um, you know, the mania numbers were, were the they said it was the, the largest audience ever to watch a WWE show, but, uh, I mean, it's probably the largest ever to watch a pay-per-view show. Um, in fact, it was, but... You know, I mean, it, it paled in comparison to like, you know, you know, like Austin and Undertaker. Eight million viewers for a Raw. Yeah. Yeah. You know, or, or, or Hulk Hogan and on, Hulk Hogan and um, wasn't Andre the Giant. Yeah, it was Hulk Hogan yeah, and Andre Saturday the Giant. Saturday Night's main event. Yeah. 33 yeah, 19, million. In 1988. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not even, it's probably one tenth of that, but they claimed it was the biggest ever. Um, and, you know, just a, a bunch of stuff, but there was no real, no real big news. You know, Nick Khan was very bullish about Amazon and you know Netflix and uh, Apple and people like that getting into the wrestling business and more people bidding um, you know and that's probably gonna happen and WWE's in great position because they are a you know they're not the NFL but they are a um, you know they're there's somebody that can move numbers they have a big fan base and can help a streaming service and so um, there's going to be a lot of people interested in um, in WWE when their rights fees come up, and I'm sure that they will get a big increase, and uh, they'll make even more money than they're making now. So we also had the uh, story in the Observer about the uh, main event of the pay per view this weekend, and how it was uh, always planned to be a six man. Yes. So yeah, that, yeah, yeah, it was. There was never. That was always the plan. This was the way they got into the plan. Um, I have no idea. If you're asking me why, I have no clue. But that's the deal. Well, I can I can understand if uh, if all the belts were going to be on the line and you're still going to deliver what you advertise, which was a unification match. But I mean, I guess we'll find out tonight. But not looking like it's going to be any sort of unification match. Oh no, 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 no! They're definitely not a tag team un- title unification match on on on, sa- on this weekend. No, no. Why would you do this? Um, you know, it's weird because you know Vince. Vince has a rule of not, like, it's not, not necessarily, like, like it, he doesn't have a rule against false advertising. He does that all the time. But he does have a rule as far as building up something that he eventually will not, not deliver. And there is no plan for a unification, or at least there was as of a couple of days ago, that could always change. Um, although it makes no sense to do it. So I think that there's a good chance there won't be. So as far as, like, why he did it this way... I have no idea, honestly. I think that it's probably something they thought would draw ratings, and and uh, but they, you know, it doesn't look like they want one set of tag team champions. I don't see any problem with having one set of tag team champions because if you've been watching the show lately, like Randy Orton and Riddle are on both shows anyway. So what would be but the they, difference? They don't, Just... but they don't want to, they don't want to keep that. You know, they they don't want to keep that uh, going for a long time. Um, you having know, having having the stars on both shows. Well, both 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 uh, networks kind of want unique viewer, you know, unique um, what is this? Unique rosters. I mean, you can do some of that back and forth, but really, um, Fox in particular really wants kind of exclusivity on its guys. All right, I I I don't know. I I've been I I understand wanting like kind of a, an exclusive roster, but like. I, all I ever hear about is is complaints about, oh, we were promised this person, and then this person went over there in the draft, and then, you know, we thought we were going to get this person. Like, if you remember when they first went to Fox, they had a graphic of of a bunch of superstars for when they were advertising the move to Fox. Yeah, Charlotte And it was like Ray. Charlotte, and, and then they did the draft, and none of them went there. 
And yeah, I remember right. there was like, you know, well, how come we didn't get this person? Now we didn't? You know, you could get everybody no. if we yeah. just combine these rosters. Yeah. Well, now all those people, Brock Lesnar and uh, Ronda Rousey and Charlotte Flair, uh, they're all there now, finally. And Roman Reigns. So uh, that uh, I know that I got a text from uh, Filthy Tom today, and uh, he was commenting on his, uh, I think he gave it four and a half stars, him and Moxley. That match was great. Yeah, this guy's like, oh, there's no way it was more than four. Oh, no, that, that match That's was, how he is. This was a great match, wasn't that it? That match was great. Yes. Yeah, 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 that yeah. That was the best yeah. Tom match I've ever seen in my life. It was the best Tom match I've ever seen. But I haven't seen like a million Tom matches, but I've seen I've seen dozens. And it was by far it was by far the best. Um, I really liked the match structure. I mean, that was the thing that I liked more than anything is just, um, you know, kind of like the timing of what they did and when they did it. Um, and it had a real, um, especially by the end, it had a real nice fight feel. And, um, you know, it, it's like for an independent match or for any match for that matter, it was really intense. I, I really, um, you know, I mean, it's like I'm not a big fan of bloodbath matches. And, and the thing is, is that match, if you took away all the blood, it still would have been exactly as good. I mean, it was just a really well, really well put together match. And um, Moxley is, you know, Moxley's really good at his, he's fantastic at his style. And um, and Tom's a real good opponent for him because of uh, the credibility they're, they're issue and things like opponents. that. They're perfect opponents. Yeah, yeah. Like when I saw that, when I saw that match, and it was like midway through the match. It wasn't even at the end. Midway through the match, it was just like. And Tom, you know, the other thing with Tom is he's he's. There's certain things, mannerisms that he does when he comes to the ring and during a match. You know, not moves. Like as for like not moves wrestling, he's like really good, and. It's like it's it's sort of like something that is unique to me that showmanship aspect that so many of the younger guys don't have and like I was watching going like you know he he really needs to be like an AEW because they don't have anyone like him um, you know what I mean it's not like he's better than everyone there or, or anything like that but they have no one like him and it's like the the you know his, his I, I just really like his idea not his ideas but just what things that he does it, it, it really impressed me yeah i uh i watched his entrance and i was like my god this guy is a superstar i mean he just he was so great during his his entrance and of course moxley his, comes out and the place just goes absolutely nuts yeah 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 his his entrance moxley you know moxley's got a fantastic aura around him especially on an independent show because um you know a lot of the top guys um, will go to an independent show and they'll work like they would work on television. And independent wrestling is very different from television wrestling. And Moxley totally gets the difference. Yeah, I remember uh, there was another Defy show, and uh, I remember the Briscoes were there. And, uh, my God, they worked their asses off on this Defy show. I remember watching this match, and I, I'm thinking, like, do they think it's Final Battle or something like that? Because they worked so hard. And man, Moxie went out there, and this guy didn't half-ass it ever. I no. mean, dude, he and, went out there and just was—I mean, he was on fire. And I mean, that's the thing: it's like a guy at his pay level working an independent show could just basically make an appearance. You know what I mean? An appearance, do his—you know—do his moves that people want to see, and everybody want to be happy. But he went way above and beyond. You know, so I, yeah, that match was—that um, was a tremendous match. Yeah, yeah. So uh, AW New Japan Forbidden Door is uh, it's all sold out. It's all sold out immediately. All the people who thought that uh, this concept wasn't viable, um, at least as a as an as a live show, we know it is. I mean, pay per view will be the pay per view, but the ticket demand was the highest for any AEW show since uh, All Out 2019, and the highest actually of any show in the United States in a long, long time which will get people mad, but it's just the truth. You know, I mean, there's nobody else that had 20,000 people uh, signed up at to buy tickets on the pre-sale that was never advertised at all. You know, it wasn't like it was for today when it was advertised. This was the day before. I mean, people didn't even, most people didn't even know about it. Obviously, obviously 20,000 people knew about it. And they were, 
you know, there's there's no doubt they were very much um, there was it was uh, they were very lucky in a sense that the secondary market scalpers, number one, made a ton of money on the recent pay-per-view shows, so they knew to buy in. And secondly, um, there were no other big shows that went on sale that day. So all, a lot of the high-level scalpers that don't touch wrestling, but just, you know, kind of like what, what, what tickets are we going to buy today? Um, there were like no big concerts, no big sports events that went on sale that day. So um, there were a lot of people. There were a lot of secondary market tickets sold. But the reality is is that, you know, those, those uh, you know, like on the... Um, the, the show in Vegas, right? Double or nothing. Um, so far, the secondary market people have made about four times the ticket price, a little under four times, about three and a half times the ticket price that they paid for it. So it's not like, you know, the, the demand isn't there or, oh, it's just scalpers buying. It's like actually scalpers are buying because the demand is so freaking high for these shows in, you know, because they're in buildings too small for the ticket demand. That's the reality of it. Funny thing is, the uh, last time there was a joint show in America with New Japan, it also did a one million dollar gate. Yes. So yes, you would have you would have thought that uh, you know people would have learned that you know maybe New Japan and AEW doing a joint show is going to do all right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. As, I mean, I, I was sure as a live show it would do really good. I didn't. I don't know. It was a pay per view. I mean, like it's uncharted water. It'll do well. I mean, I'm sure it will do well. But you know, will it do like what CM Punk did for his return? You know, I'm guessing no. But maybe it will, and we'll all learn. And then if we do, you know, there'll be more. It's it's. Uh, but yeah, I mean, AEW. With well, the we gotta we gotta do a break. Sorry, Dave, but uh, we'll talk more after the break on this and take your calls. Observer Live. Back on the show, Brian Elber is here, Wrestling Observer Live. If you want the new Observer, 40,000 words, 40,000 words of news and information on pro wrestling, mixed martial arts, historical stories, analysis. It's like a half a half a death of WCW every week, Dave writes. Not quite half. Half of the original. One-third of the noon expanded edition. But anyway, you can get it at uh, WrestlingObserver.com. Your subscription gets you the new Observers, thousands of back issues, all of our new audio podcasts, including this show, and uh, archives as well. So uh, if you're a wrestling fan and you are not signed up to WrestlingObserver.com, you're missing out, brother! So get up there and sign up right now, WrestlingObserver.com. You won't regret it. And you can read all of the stories in the new Observer, plus all of the breakdowns of everything from all over the world. Rusty, Rusty Rose, ten four eighty six. <laughs> dusty, is it Rusty or Dusty? <laughs> it's uh, it's Dusty. Harmon Blanchett. <laughs> okay, out of ring. <laughs> Harmon <and> Blanchett. <laughs> Harwin. <laughs> way back then, they had cha chain barricades. <laughs> And then they had a tag team with Rich Fl uh, Rick Flair and some more guys, and so that was that. I'm just who who <laughs> did Rusty Rhodes wrestle? If you enjoy these videos, for just seven dollars and ninety nine cents per month, you can enjoy full length editions of the Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.